In this problem, we have a full disk that's a solid object. It's very thin, and it's charged everywhere across its surface. So it has a surface charge density, and the radius of this disk is r. Now, we have from a previous problem, and you would have to be given this if this was on the exam, you would have to be given that E due to a ring of charge is equal to KQ of the ring times x over the square root of x squared plus the radius of the ring squared to the 3 halves. <clears throat> so in order to get the electric field due to the disk, we're going to divide it up into small rings. So our dq, our small element of charge now, is going to be the full ring. So this is dq. The distance from the center of the disk where we want the field, x, is the same x that's in the ring formula. And we want the field out here. And we know that the field is just a little bit of field now from that ring, because it's just a little ring. <clears throat> and putting the variables in from our ring, we would have k. Now the charge on our ring is just little dq. x is the same. The radius of our ring will be just small r. And so this is the radius of our ring dr, r, and the thickness of our ring is dr. Okay, now to get the field of the disk, we integrate or add all the fields due to the ring. And the direction is going to be in the i hat direction. So the integral that we're doing, k can come out, x can come out because that remains constant even as I expand that ring, i hat and I end up having to integrate dq over x squared plus r squared to the 3 halves. And the limits of integration are from 0 to capital R. But we need to get dq in terms of r. So to do that, we use surface charge density, or area charge density, which we call sigma. Defined to be the total charge of the disk over the total area of the disk or a little bit of charge element over a little bit of area. Now that little bit of area is the area of the ring, which is equal to 2 pi r circumference times thickness, dr. So I can write an expression for dq as sigma 2 pi r dr. That now goes into our integral. So I have e for my disk, I should call this E disk, is equal to KXI hat. I'm going to pull the sigma out, I'm going to pull the pi out, but I'm going to leave the 2R dr inside the integral and the x squared plus r squared in there too. Okay, now this isn't too bad an integral. We're going to use U substitution. U is x squared plus r squared. So du is 2r dr. That's why I left the 2 in there, just for hindsight. And so this becomes the integral of u to the minus 3 halves du, which isn't too bad to do. I just get u to the negative 1 half over negative 1 half. Now I'm going to switch back to r before I put in my limits. I'm going to get that negative 2 up top here. Get my k, I hat sigma pi. And that's equal to 1 over the root of x squared plus r squared, evaluated between my limits now between 0 and r. So I can go back and put that my limits were 0 to r when I have my r interval. Okay, substituting in for r. I get 1 over the root of x squared plus capital R squared, subbing in for 0, and I get 1 over x. Now the quantity in brackets is actually negative, so I'm going to fix this up a little bit. And I'll have, I'm going to get that negative in there, switch the direction, the, and I'm going to put the x in there as well. So I have a 2, k, i, hat, sigma, pi. 
switching it around, taking the x in, I get 1 minus x over the root of x squared plus r squared. <clears throat> now I can't leave sigma there because that wasn't given in the problem. So sigma is equal to the total charge over the total area of the disk, which is pi r squared. So sigma times pi is just q over r squared. So I've got a q over r squared out front. And in the brackets, I have 1 minus x over the root of x squared plus r squared. And that is the electric field due to a uniformly charged disk.